This is definitely one of those Sundays when it's a good thing I didn't put a sermon title or scripture in the in the uh, the bulletin because it's changed very much this time. Um, I backed up from where where we're supposed to be uh, today. We're supposed to be uh, in the third third chapter of the Gospel of John, looking at verses of uh, let's see, I guess fourteen to uh, twenty one is where where the lectionary has us. But in in my Preparing for this, I, I kept backing up, and I ended up backing up so far that with the, the time that I have available to myself today, because I know that many of us are wanting to get over to Lanesboro for the uh, roast beef deal that, or meal that they have over at the, uh, the, the Methodist Church there, and then we also have a, a meeting, short meeting for the concert committee after the worship. So with all those things, I don't have a lot of time today to preach, so I, I couldn't deal with this big block of scripture. So this is going to become kind of a two-part sermon. I'm going to start in one spot today, and I'm going to drop it, and we'll pick it up next week, and we'll finish this big block uh, in the Gospel of John. But if you remember where we were at last week, we were in the cleansing of the temple, right? And we talked about the cleansing of the temple, and talked about how Jesus is telling them that, these, that if you tear down this temple and ripped it in three days, he'll raise it again, and they're scratching their head. It took us all these years to build it, and you telling us you're going to bring it back in three days. And of course, he's using the temple as a metaphor, isn't he? So we, from there, we next move into uh, the encounter uh, with Jesus and Nicodemus. And so I want to read for you in the third chapter of the Gospel of John. We're going to be reading from the third chapter, verses 1 through 10. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these things that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I say to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? I remember last week when we were talking again about the clearing of the temple, and I mentioned how the John's Gospel is the only one that has this temple clearing incident at the beginning of Jesus' ministry and in the synoptics in John and, and, and or excuse me, in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, in the synoptics, it's at the end. Why in the world would John choose to start off with this right after the, the, end of the, the wedding of Canaan and then we jump right into the cleansing of the temple? And now we jump into Nicodemus. Why in the world would Jesus bring this cleansing of the temple forward? I think there's a reason for it in the story of Nicodemus. And this is, a, this is, this is Pastor Roy's ramblings here. Uh, I'm taking a bit of a different angle at this than I've read in any commentaries. Uh, but as you might have already figured out, sometimes I take some strange angles at things. Uh, hopefully sometimes they are revelatory. I think the reason why John chose to bring the cleansing of the temple up prior to this story of Nicodemus is a theological one. Precisely, it's eschatological. It has to do with eschatology. It's the end times. It has to do with ultimate things. So he's bringing this up here. He's talking about the destruction of the temple, right? And then he's going to rebuild the temple, rebuilding the temple of Christ. We are, again, part of the body of Christ. We are all a little bitty corner of the temple. But here he's talking to Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He's a Pharisee. He's a member of the Sanhedrin. He's a big deal. As we're looking at the story of the temple 
And the temple is not really the temple, but the temple is Jesus. Could it very well be that when we're looking at the story of Nicodemus, Nicodemus is not Nicodemus at all, but rather the, the Jewish people, Israel. He's the entirety of Israel in this story. And I'm talking about, we, we, we get wrapped up in this born-again Christian, and this is where we get it from. But here in the NRSV, it says born from above, which is an alternate meaning. And just as the temple is, there's a lot of vertical movement, isn't there? Jesus, the temple is being torn down, the temple is being raised up. You're being born from above, that later, as we go through this block of scripture, there's going to be ascensions, there's going to be more of a vertical movement. There's a lot of vertical movement going on in this story of this block of scripture as we get through the third chapter of John. And so, Israel needs to be born again from above. It needs to enter into its mother's womb. And of course, God, we, you know, we, we typically, traditionally we talk about in a masculine sense, Father, but we all know that God does not have a gender, that's not, he's a spiritual being. And so the metaphor is that Israel needs to enter back into its mother's womb, it needs to enter back into God's womb and be reborn again from above. Jesus did not come to start Christianity. He came to reshape Judaism. And ultimately, that's what it's going to be. Ultimately, all things will come back together. Every knee will bow. And it will all come back. And it will come back to that place. The chosen people. Judaism. So, Israel will be born from above. The irony is that not many of these scriptures in John have been used for anti-Semitic behavior and condemnation of the Jews, when in fact, John's, John's telling us that, that that's where it's at. It's in, it's in Judaism. Israel will be born again from above. Unless we think that Nicodemus is, is just leaves and disappears from the, from the whole picture that Israel disappears and is 